More than 1,300 species are listed as either endangered or threatened in the U.S. The fight to save them dates back more than 100 years, but it wasn't until 1973 that Congress passed the Endangered Species Act. In the last 50 years, it's helped save hundreds of species from extinction, including the American bald eagle. And experts at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. are a critical part of that effort. Reporter Heather Graff has a success story, and this one involves a culturally significant toad that's been virtually extinct in the wild for more than a decade. Well, even though they're bright yellow, right, they're not the easiest to, to see. Perhaps the first thing you should know about the Panamanian golden frog Can you see him? is that it's not actually a frog. It is a toad, right? So it's a beautiful species, but it is a toad. A toad, despite its name. So there's one here. And Matt Evans says that's just the beginning of what makes this amphibian so unique. One of the really interesting things about it is that it's culturally very significant to Panamanian culture. It's kind of considered a national treasure, kind of like we would consider the bald eagle important here in the United States. Evans is an assistant curator at the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, D.C. Ah where visitors who look closely found it right there and see the Panamanian golden frog on display daily. I hope they take away that that they're seeing a species that potentially no longer exists in the wild. People have not really seen this species in the wild, I believe, since 2009. The public exhibit inside the Reptile Discovery Center tells the story of the toad now facing imminent extinction due to a fatal skin fungus that's spreading rapidly across Central America. And behind the scenes, the Smithsonian's team is trying to save this species before it's too late. Bringing them in captivity is keeping basically these populations viable and ongoing while we try to figure out how to get them back into the wild. Evans traveled to Panama early on in his career and now aims to recreate that environment in order to breed the toads here at the zoo. They're gonna breed during the rainy season. And what we do is we start triggering rainy seasons. We create a rainy season by increasing our misting. He says setting the mood for male and female toads can be tricky. The animals can detect changes in atmospheric pressure. But in late 2022, the weather in D.C. helped make for a perfect storm, a perfect pairing, and plenty of eggs that soon hatched into tadpoles. And then over the next few months, we might have to get close. The tadpoles became toadlets, about 400 of them in all. It hadn't been done here since 2004. It's a big deal and also a big undertaking. Do you name them? There's no way we could remember all of their names. Um, <laughs> so there's no way that I'm going to individually name each frog. That'd be crazy. The toads are given individual ID numbers that help zoo staff track them, take care of them, and make sure they all get enough food. That one's got one. In the form of live insects. Evans says all of it is done in the name of conservation. It's pressure. But it's pressure that you take on when you say you want to work with these individual species. The proud parents seen here, and as for their still growing offspring, some will serve as animal ambassadors at zoos across the country, while others will take part in research projects or future breeding efforts. We have a responsibility. So that one day, the Panamanian golden frog can return home. That's the goal, whether it's this generation or maybe generation after that. That is always the goal, to put animals back into the wild. That particular species, as you heard, is native to Panama. But even here in the U.S., frogs and toads are an important part of our ecosystem. They're considered nature's pest control because they eat all sorts of insects. And you can help protect them by minimizing use of fertilizer and pesticides on your lawn. Experts say runoff from those chemicals can pollute waterways where amphibians live. 